Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. That's a quick start. I clapped and then went straight into it. Anyways, let me tell you that today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Displate. Displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Look at these amazing prints. I'm really jealous that there's Linus Tech Tips one, but I, I'm not, I, I can't spend any more money on office decoration. So I'm stuck in this. Anyways, use our coupon code UFD to save 15% off. Dope metal prints hang on the wall pretty easily. They're bent at the edges so you don't cut yourself. It's amazing. The artwork is fantastic. And for everyone you buy, they plant trees. They're an ecological place shop words. Anyways, let's get on into the hot news, which is actually something pretty interesting. Amidst all of the discussion of the trade war between the United States and China, there's been obviously all of these things happening between Huawei and uh, all of the American manufacturers and how they can't use Intel stuff and their mate books anymore. Anyways, China has apparently come out with a brand new CPU that can match or exceed some of Intel's stuff. So this is actually something that has been going on for a while. Chinese company Xiaoxin, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, semiconductor and partnered with Via Technologies, in case you don't remember, they also used to make x86 CPUs. Um, they have actually recently announced a brand new eight core 16 nanometer CPU that has some pretty decent performance when it comes to a brand new entry into the x86 CPU market. So the Xiaoxin CPU, which is known as the KX6000, are on par with an i5-7400. So that's a quad core non hyper threaded CPU versus an eight core I actually don't know if they have hyper threading. My guess is probably no s simultaneous multi threading on these, but it's still really impressive considering that we don't have any other competitors in the x86 market and yet a Chinese company is coming in and potentially providing an alternative. One of these could possibly field most people's gaming PCs out in the wild. I mean, how many people really have that much better than a quad core? I mean, with Ryzen, maybe. Like, since 2017, people have been shifting to four cores, eight threads, but uh, getting something that could be competitive with that is quite good. They've also announced that they are working on future plans for seven nanometer CPUs using PCI Express 4.0 and DDR5 support. Obviously, those haven't come out just yet. Uh, it's gonna be a while before they even get there, but they're having benchmarks marks pop popping up in public databases and it actually looks pretty gosh dang good there's a new competitor to Intel and AMD just not coming from a US based company rather coming from China and apparently Lenovo has already used some previous generation of Xiaoxin processors in their notebooks so it could be that that's gonna happen moving forward or potentially even Huawei could partner with them for their matebook series obviously they would have to get a little bit better before they can be competitive to where things are right now but We'll see where this goes. China making big strides when it comes to CPU development. China. And then I want to bring this up because it's actually kind of cool because I haven't heard of a new A320 motherboard in ages, but Asus is rolling out the new Prime A320i K mini ITX motherboard. So that's pretty cool. I actually like it. Probably won't support too many Ryzen 3000 processors, but first and second gen processors should do pretty well on it. I, I just, I, I love it. Mini ITX, just check it out if you're interested. And then SK Hynix has announced that they have started mass producing the world's first 128 layer 4D NAND. So they were also one of the very first to come in for TLC NAND flash, being hot on the ball for producing all of these new uh, SSD technologies. So we will see when those actually come out into production, but they're already starting on 128 layer mass production and they're working on 176 layer coming soon. And then let's talk about benchmarks for whatever reason. Good transition. Anyways, the company behind 3D Mark, UL Benchmarks, has finally rolled out their PCI Express 4.0 test, or rather it's their PCI Express feature test. This was probably the most deceitful thing that AMD did at their E3 press conference, showing off a Navi card running this benchmark versus a 2080 Ti running this benchmark. And look at that, the Navi is so much faster. Yeah, if you would have put an RX 560 on the PCI Express 4.0 and it had four PCI Express 4.0 support, guess what? It would have beat the 2080 Ti too. It's nothing about the freaking graphics card. Get out of here. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. And then Steam Summer Sale is actually happening right now. It's running through July 9th. There's 
several games on sale, so you can check that out. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is 50% off. Devil May Cry 5 is 34% off. It's actually a pretty decent game. You might get your money's worth there. I couldn't uh, recommend it enough. And also Neo, which is a game that has been out for a while, is at a 60% sale. So you can check those out at the link in the video description. We don't have an affiliate code or anything, but Steam Summer Sale for you to waste all of your cash. Shut up and take my money. Let's talk about something that will replace hard drives and RAM and merge them together. Lancaster University has filed a patent or actually has secured a US patent for a new electronic memory device known as universal memory, where it could potentially merge the two technologies together to have the speed of DRAM, but then also the longevity capacity of SSDs. Obviously, we are ages away from this actually being a realistic thing because we would see it out on the market slightly at super expensive prices, but it's nowhere to be found. They just got the patent. So the technology's there. This could be something that we'll see down the line, but yeah, strides being made in memory development. With science. And then let's talk about strides being made in phones because the Huawei Mate X, which in case you don't remember, is their foldable phone, which is supposed to compete with the Samsung Galaxy Fold. They have delayed the release of that because they didn't want to have the same production issues that Samsung had with the bad press about how they're breaking everywhere. Anyways, they are reportedly going to be launching by September, so they're setting more of a hard deadline than Samsung, even though Samsung said it could be possible they would be out in July. The latest rumors and indications are that it's going to skip the July launch date and possibly could be as late as August or even September. So Huawei, instead of having bad press for having a crap product, they're just going to do the same thing that Samsung's doing, which is further testing and then launch with no uh, controversies. <laughs> Huawei, no controversies. It's a real thing. In case you wanted to know just how big Huawei actually is, as of May 31st, they have shipped over 100 million smartphones this year. They shipped over 200 million last year, which made them a bigger smartphone company than Apple. They are on pace to also potentially break that this year, and especially considering they didn't sell that many smartphones in the US in the first place, this ban isn't gonna affect their sales figures too much. It'll probably affect things so, like next year when they can't actually use SD technology and all of that kind of stuff. So we'll see uh, what future impact is on Huawei, but they should have a pretty decent year this year, possibly even breaking the 200 million mark again. But speaking of more Huawei stuff, Microsoft and Intel, even though uh, the MateBook product update in the future has been canceled by Huawei. Microsoft and Intel have promised continued security support for the current MateBook devices that are out on the market, so you don't have to worry, especially with Intel's uh, plethora of uh, bugs and features that allow people to hack you pretty easily. Uh, it would be pretty scary if they were never updated, but Intel continuing to support their CPUs on MateBooks as well as Microsoft for security updates. So it's not dead in the water. If you do own a current MateBook, you should still be pretty secure for a while. Obviously, you still have the uh, the technical Huawei spying claims. So, you know, there's that. China! And I already talked about this back at the Huawei one, so I'm bad at ordering my hot news. Samsung is getting ready to release Apparently sometime soon, their foldable phones. We'll see if that ever happens. Whatever, get out of here. And then Google Drive is testing an offline storage mode into Chrome, which especially given the plague of outages that have been taking place on Cloudflare, on Amazon Web Services, and then even Google's own servers as of late. It's been like at least one week where we've seen a major outage on the internet. This would be great because as soon as Google goes down, you've lost access to your docs, which means that you can't actually work. So this is going to be a way to potentially alleviate that, giving you offline access to things such as your documents, PDFs, images, all that kind of stuff. So you won't have to just not have anything when they go down because they will go down. It's a giant conspiracy. They're gonna take down the whole internet and then the mole people are gonna rise up and then they're all gonna be part of alphabet soup. It's a massive government conspiracy. Speaking of Google stuff, specifically Alphabet, the parent company, well, one of their uh, owned company, Sidewalk Labs, is actually planning a smart city to be built in portion of Toronto. Uh, they're calling it a master innovation and development plan where they're basically gonna spy on you wholeheartedly, completely, gather all of the data that they need to actually map things out and figure out how to make a smart city, and then they're gonna do it. So more spying, the place is gonna be called Quayside. So if you don't want any sort of like Big Brother not watching you, 
moved to Toronto. Fabulous place, I hear. Speaking of Cloudflare, because I talked about them earlier, so I'm segueing now into them. They are uh, trying to protect the internet from quantum computing. They're trying to make sure that the encryption stuff that they use to protect the internet, TLS, they're trying to make sure that it's quantum proof so that the cryptography cracking abilities of quantum computers, which can process many multiverses at once, at least that's what I'm told when people talk to me about quantum stuff, that it won't be able to crack what's on the internet right now because if it can, say goodbye to Bitcoin, say goodbye to the internet, everything is no longer encryptable. So Cloudflare pushing the initiative to make sure but that's never gonna happen. And then talking about something that's been talked about on literally every other news publication thus far, Microsoft is apparently working on a foldable Surface device that could arrive as early as next year, which Reese is giving a face at this. I think that a foldable tablet makes a heck of a lot more sense than a foldable phone, but then it also is just like, why wouldn't you make this a laptop? Where's my dang keyboard? Why am I touching the bottom portion I don't like it. We'll see if there's any good indication of whether or not it's gonna be useful. Apparently it's gonna be two nine inch tablet tablets merged together like they're a sandwich. Cool. And it apparently will work with Android. I, this, I'm confused now. What is Microsoft doing with their lives? I'll tell you what I'm doing ending this episode of Hot News. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed, please subscribe. We need more subscriber numbers. And then check out Display. Display.com forward slash UFD Tech Official. Dope metal prints. Buy them, buy them, buy them. They're amazing. They're great decoration. You can get them like this. You can get them with cities. You can get a dope Goku. You can get Cyberpunk. You can get Linus Tech Tips. You can get nature. It's all there. Display.com. Use coupon code UFD to save 15% off. Anyways, that's it. And in case anybody doesn't remember why I have a mohawk, it's because of a charity stream that we did over on the UFD Tech Channel. We raised a lot of money. I got a mohawk. I spiked it today for you guys. Anyways, bye.